Salantana Taina Yist Erlin Shalom Ras Tefari Ine Ras Iadinos Tefari Neng I am Ras Iadonis Tefari otherwise known in the Brotherhood as Wendum Yadon or Brother Yadon of the line of Judah Society of His Imperial Majesty and the Ethiopian Hebrew Brotherhood. Now, this is our 51st sabbatical, our 51st um, Sabbath within our luni solar or solar lunar cycle of Torah portion readings and feedings that <clears throat> that is the basis of our calendar or our timing. Now, some have asked and have questioned why is it that we observe a lunar and a solar calendar simultaneously? In other words, why do we observe both the Ethiopic or the Ethiopian calendar as well as the Hebrew calendar? Well, first of all, the answer to this is based on our roots, who we are as a people and our ancient history, that which has been suppressed, that which has been hidden, that which is a part of our stolen legacy as a people, this once lost, now found data, is Israel. But now, there are some very practical answers and reasonings that are connected with our calendar, with our Ken Akot Ater, the Ken Akot Ater. Now, most Ethiopians would observe of course, the Ethiopian calendar, especially in Ethiopia, and for 3,000 years plus, this calendar, or one very much similar like unto it, has been in use within our Judeo-Christian commonwealth, what we call our Ethiopian or holy Ethiopian commonwealth, we as a people at home and now abroad within the exile or captivities we as falashes of the West. Now, why do we observe a lunar and a solar calendar or a a solar, more correctly, a solar and a lunar calendar? Now, certain Jews, they express it as a lunar solar calendar and perhaps you would recall when we are introducing this particular portion or that portion for the sabbatical Torah portions. We usually will refer to our luni solar Hebrew calendar. Now this luni solar Hebrew calendar as we've mentioned more correctly is our solar lunar calendar. In other words it both has a solar implication and it has a lunar implication vis-a-vis -vis our timing vis-a-vis -vis how we time and how we account for time. And this is important when we consider our holidays and holy days. In fact, in this particular season that we're in right now, we're about to enter into what is known as the Rosh Hashanah, or the head of the year, as well as the Yom Kippur, as well as the Sukkot, or the ingatherings or tabernacles. Now, if you look at even a good Ethiopian calendar, which is in the Ethiopic or the Gu'uz, written in the Gu'uz and has the Gu'uz uh, Ahaz or number numerals, and you are able to understand it, you will basically not see the Hebraic influence so prominently as it was some hundreds of years ago. Now this has a lot to do with what has happened in Ethiopia and what has happened with the various um, uh, persecutions, diasporas, invasions, um, the afflictions of, of God's people, which is all very prophetic and very scriptural and very biblical, especially in the prophecies. But let us try to explain this as best as we can, at least to give ones who have been asking concerning why is it that we observe both the solar and the lunar calendar. As we said, the Jews would call it a luni solar Hebrew calendar. 
we would call it a solar lunar Ethiopic Hebrew calendar. Now, well, what's what's the difference? What's the difference? In ancient times, perhaps it was a lunar and a solar calendar. In this present uh, dispensation that we're in, it's a solar lunar calendar. Now, when we consider the Old Testament. The Old Testament. It was lunar. When we consider the New Testament, it is solar. Right? Now, there's a very important implication implication within this. Now, the lunar equals the mother and the solar equals the father, right? The lunar, and sometimes ones may add some sort of, um, some sort of, let me move this over for a moment some sort of symbology, some sort of symbology might be used to better um, symbolize a, a symbolic logic. Now, the mother is the lunar, relates to the lunar, and the father relates to the solar. Now, in Old Testament times, as we pointed out, let's get the pointer right here. In Old Testament times, right, it was lunar. In the New Testament times, or the Hadith, or Hadith Kidan, the Burita Hadasha, it is solar. We've come into the fatherhood of God. In the Old Testament, it was the motherhood of God. And you find this very much so in the prophetic scriptures, in the books of the prophet. And certain prophetical works, you'll find this illuminated at great um, at great lengths, where God Ha Elohim is likened to be a mother, you understand, or even the maternal aspects, and and the whole symbology of the mother is very prominent within the what we call the Belui Kidan or the Old Covenant books. Now, in Revelation. When we look at Revelation, and please at least pay as much attention as possible, write down what notes and questions, because hopefully in this upcoming cycle, as we're completing this end of the year, and as we're in a, in, in a fall festival, we're in the fall festival season, and there are certain differences between the Ethiopic holidays or holy days, for example, Rosh Hashanah where Rosh Hashanah is upcoming on the 28th to the 30th of this month of September. But we just have experienced the Adis Ahmed and went through the Adis Ahmed, which is the new year as per September 12th for this year because it's a leap year. So one will say, well, if Rosh Hashanah means head of the year, and that is the Hebrew or Jewish new year, then how come we don't just observe that? Or some would say since the Ethiopian New Year is September 11th, except for leap year September 12th, why don't we just observe that? We observe both of those, but we have to understand exactly what is the reason for the season. So it's important for us to understand what's the reason for the season. The first thing we want to explain right here is why do we observe both a a, a a lunar as well which is the Old Testament as well as the New Testament, the solar calendar. Why do we observe both of these simultaneously? Now there's a couple of key um verses when they're properly understood and this is all within the context, it, rightly interpreting the context of 
of the past times of the ancient times, where we've been touching on what some call, quote, the so-called mythology. Um, some may consider this um, Egyptology, some of the issues and subject matters that we touch on, because we have to touch on all of that in order to put this matter into its proper context concerning the half of the story that we haven't been told. So, here in Revelation, let me just give you a couple of key verses right here. One verse, I think I'll put it over here, is, uh, let's put, Proverbs, P-R-O-V, chapter 1, um, verse uh, 8. And then we're going to put right here, Revelation, chapter 12, verse 1. So take this down. Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 8, and Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. So let's go to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8, and stay tuned. Stay tuned for Nithabim, which is this particular sabbatical Torah portion reading and feeding that we hope to touch on. Kazab uh, Chala, um, after, after, Kazib Chala, after this right here. So when we go to Proverbs, Proverbs chapter um, 1, first chapter of Proverbs, and we've touched on this before, but it's important for us to touch on this again. It says, My son, my son or my child, hear the instruction of thy father, of, of the fatherhood of God, the instruction of the fatherhood of God, and forsake not the law, the law of thy mother. So it says, to the child, this is the basic um, instructions, Proverbs here. Proverbs is a very, very important book. Proverbs says, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. So now if we would look at this, we will see from the, from the father is the instruction and from the mother is the law. Now we know the law as being Torah, the, the, the Torah or the orit, as we would say, is the law. So the law belongs to the mother. Now, this helps to explain something that we find in the New Testament. There's a verse that we find in the New Testament where it, it, it expresses a teaching concerning the law where it says to us that the law was our schoolmaster that the law is our schoolmaster. Now, what does this mean? Let's go to the verse. Let's find the verse right here. It's in, um, uh, let's see, this is Galatians, the footnote right here, um, verse 24. Yeah, Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verse 24. And let's put this, if we can, um, let's put it right, right down, right, right over here. Galatians, that's for Galatians chapter 3, verse 24. And let's put a star here because it's important. This is an important verse right here. Galatians chapter 3, verses 24. It says, wherefore the law, and when we say law, we're speaking in terms of Torah. Just make a note of that, Torah, the Ori. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, to bring us to Moshiach, that we might be justified, that we might be justified by faith. Then in verse 25, it says, but after that faith, that particular, the true faith, that faith, the real faith, the the Ori, to our Hymenotis come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Now, it has a footnote for schoolmaster. It has a footnote for schoolmaster. So let's understand this idea. The true intent of the law, some would say, is condemnation. The true intent of the law is, or Torah, is realization. Is, is, is realization. You understand? And in that realization, there, of course, would be condemnation, once one recognizes the truth and the fact that they have not been um, living in the truth or recognizing the truth previously and was deceived previously, well, of course, there is a 
due amount of condemnation. You understand? Where one has to confront their ego, one has to confront their personality, one has to begin to recognize themselves, or as you would say, know thyself. So the true intent of the law, they say here, is condemnation, and it's a preparatory discipline. This is what our Torah portions, the Torah portions, the readings and feedings are. It's a preparatory discipline. It's, it's the first level of the Dek Mezamurit uh, Net, or it's the first level of discipleship, what we know as discipleship. Now, the footnote that it has down here is to um, pi the goggles, a word from the Greek known as pi the goggles, Bamarinya, in the Amharic it's Mogzit. Mogzit in the Torah, it is a, a nanny. One who is a nanny. In other words, a nanny would be a mogzi, pamarinya. But the Greek for that is pi the goggles, the word pi the goggles. And now pi the goggles means child conductor. And here's a note that the Schofield has it says, among the Greeks and Romans, persons, among the Greeks and Romans, persons, for the most part, slaves, who had it in charge to educate and give constant attendance upon boys till they came of age. So in the amongst the Greeks, this, this particular concept that we find in Galatians chapter three, verses twenty-four to twenty-five, Pi de Bamarinya, um, translated in the Amharic, and the Amharic of this is, would be Mogzit, a Mogzit, which in the English translation would be a nanny, but the idea based here on the Greek is a child conductor. And now among the Greeks and the Romans or the Greco Romans, there was persons, certain people in the community or the society for the most part they say those who were slaves in the Greco Roman times had it had a charge. They had a uh, a duty, a responsibility to educate and give constant and give constant attendance upon boys, upon the male children, until they came of age, according to H. A. W. Mayer. Now, the footnote goes that the argument does not turn upon the extent or nature of the pedagogue's authority, but upon the fact that it wholly ceased when the child became a son. So when we go from the first level of discipleship, and this is a part of a discipleship, can be included, of course, in discipleship teaching, that when we go from being a child, a, 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 a lidge in that sense, you understand, and become a son. Now people say, well, what's the difference? Well, better yet, you could you could die. Let's correct that. Let's let's correct that. When one becomes a son, they become a lich. Both in our Hebraic sense, this is where the bar mitzvah or the bar mitzvah. What's the bar mitzvah? Is a son or the bat mitzvah, the son or daughter of the commandment. It, it's a rite of passage, and this is another um, important topic for the Rastafari and the Ethiopian Hebrew community that we need to touch on because it's something very important when we see the state of black boys and, and the state of black people, but especially the black males, we will recognize immediately, we should, the importance of a rite of passage. And many black teachers and educators and lecturers have spoken on the need of having a rite of passage and how in being enslaved, which we understand this to be fulfilling you understand, fulfilling the so-called curses for disobedience when we recognize who we are as a people, the so-called Negro, you understand, is in truth the Hebrew or the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, in going from a child, the child, Bamarinya, would be Hittan. Hittan. Hittan is almost like a babe to say a child in the sense of, of a little babe. In other words, when one is born again, one is not born big. 
one is born as a little child as a little so each of us in the repentance and in the it's, it's a process See, we have to understand carefully when we're studying, we're seeking to learn, of course, but also to see it as one system, to see it in its full context and the relationship of one spiritual idea, you understand, of one idea with another idea, and all of these ideas collectively, you understand, they form a composite picture as when we study one um, Torah portion or parasha or the orit minbab and then we study another minbab which is to say minbab nibab which is a reading as we study the various different readings we can hopefully see pretty quickly by the second reading at least by the third reading that this all goes together that that that, that there is a a full idea, a development of idea. And as we move further in our studies, we begin to recognize that the earlier studies or the foundational studies or the first studies or the former studies was important in helping us understand the latter studies. Now, in the note right here, the argument they say does not turn upon the extent or nature of the pedagogue's authority. So they're saying that it's not about how much authority the pedagogue has, but upon the fact that this sort of um, pedagogy, you understand, or this um, sort of school mastering, that it ceases when the child, when each of us as a newborn, as a newborn, as a hitan, the Bamarinya word is hitan, hitan, as a hitan, now become a lich, when we become a lich, you understand, when we become a lich. And truly when we become a lich is when we experience our world Tizaz or Walete Tizaz in the case of girls. And now this will come under hopefully the teaching or the lecture on the rites, our Ethiopian, Hebrew, and Rastafari rites of passage. Speaking of the Bar Mitzvah and the Welde Tizaz for males and the Bat Mitzvah, mitzvah which is the Tizaz, Waleta, Tizaz, Waleta, Tizaz for girls. So there is both the rite of passage for the males as well as for the females. But we're going to begin with the rite of passage for the males. Some say that the rite of passage for the girls, Bat Mitzvah, is something new. In a sense it is, but there are certain basic teachings, certain, certain basics that both the males and the females, the sons and the daughters, need to know. Since he says he pours out his spirit in Joel, in, in Tindete Iwel, he pours out his spirit on the sons and the daughters. You understand? So the Almighty is not sexist, but we have to understand, you understand, the basic order. And this is a good, a, a good place to begin because many perhaps did not even understand that even in the Bible there is the mother and the father or the father and the mother aspects, you understand, vis-a-vis -vis the Almighty and our relationship with the Almighty. But it also touches on our calculation of time. How do we tell time? Not just the time of, you know, what time is it like right now, but what, what's the season? You know what I'm saying? What's the season? You understand, when do we observe certain holy days and holy times? And as we said from the beginning of this particular recording, that we are moving towards the Rosh Hashanah. Now, for your notes, Rosh Hashanah is not found in the Bible, in the Hebrew Bible. This we need to understand that Rosh Hashanah is not found in the Hebrew Bible. Now, for so-called Jews, Rosh Hashanah is two days. Now, the... Uh, the Karaite Jews, um, they basically observe only one day because according to their um, Rebim and Rabbis, excuse me, there's not two days mentioned in the Bible. Some even, as we do, um, argue the fact that this idea of Rosh Hashanah also kind of covers up another Hebrew holy day. And that Hebrew holy day is the Yom uh, Teruma, Teruma, Teruma which is the blowing of trumpets. And that is really where we get the idea of the New Year's 
from in the book of Leviticus, and that's another aspect that we'll touch on. But for your notes, Rosh Hashanah is not there biblically. It's not in the Bible. This might surprise many ones and ones, because they would say it's a Jewish holiday. It must be in the Hebrew, although it's not found there. It is something that later on was interpreted by the so-called Jewish rabbis and the Jewish authorities to both kind of wrap up, you understand, wrap up um, uh, two holy days, you understand, but it's, it's based on some speculation. We're not saying that it is of no value. What we're saying is that, there's, that as they said, the devil's in the details. We need to understand the details of it. Now, for us, from the Ethiopic or from the the solar, this is what September 11th and in leap year September 12th refers to. Now, from the lunar is the Hebraic. You know, saying that from the lunar is the Hebrew, and we should have put that over here. Um, the H Hebrew and the E for the solar or the Ethiopic, speaking of New Year. Now, let's just get through this right here, and um, this all will make sense. Please bear with I and I. This, this will come together and, and, and make perfect sense of where we're going, you understand, even before we deal with uh, Nita Bin, which is this Torah portion, the 51st Torah portion, also known as Koma Chukwal or one standing, or you all standing. So, they said the argument turns upon the fact that that the pedagogy, or, or the pedagogos, the, the mogzit character, or the, the schoolmastering character of both the pedagogos, the mogzit, the child conducted the schoolmaster, as well as the Torah, because Hawari Apalos is now showing that the Torah is a type of a schoolmaster. It's a type of a discipline like the pedagogos or like a nanny until, until as it says, until, but after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. After faith has come, we're not under a schoolmaster. That means after we become mature in the hymenote or in the, the uh, ritua hymenote, in the true faith, the rit it amin, this faith that we preach and we minister the good news of. Once we come to maturity in our discipleship, we go from being a child or a hit'an, and we become a lij or a waleta t'izaz, or walet, I mean walde t'izaz for sons, and waleta t'izaz for daughters as bar mitzvah for sons and bar mitzvah for daughters which is the rite of passage. So it says that when the minor, this is when the minor now, one who is a minor in status now becomes an adult. In other words, when the minor, when the yalawaki becomes alawaki. In other words, when the ignorant one becomes knowledgeable, basically, when the immature becomes mature. And the idea of maturity Ethiopically and Bamarinya in the Amharic is Alawaki. You understand? Uh, awaki, Awaki, Awaki. One who is awake, but really one who is a knower. Um, Yalawaki or Alawaki is one who does not know. You understand? Alawaki, one doesn't know. Awaki, one knows. So when we go from immaturity to maturity, this is what the rite of passage is all about. But we need to understand the mother and the father in a sense. And we need to understand the concept and the idea of the mother and father. Now, as we go further, it says that the son, the adult son, does voluntarily that which formerly he did in fear of the pedagogue. That means that when one becomes an adult, we do these things voluntarily. We do these things lovingly. We, we seek to study Torah. We seek to, 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 to build up on our faith and even to fellowship with others in the celebration of being Ethiopian Hebrews and being his people, you understand, and returning from the curses in that disobedient state to the, the blessings for obedience. But 
even if he does not, even if one does not, it is no longer a question between the son and the pedagogue or the law. In other words, even if one now goes through the Torah portion, readings and feedings, so forth and so on, and does not embrace it, you understand, and, and does not do these things voluntarily, it is no longer a question between the son and the pedagogue. Now, the pedagogue or the paedagogos, the mogzi, is the hug, is Torah. The Torah is the mogzi. So it's between now the son and his father, the son and the father, or to say the son and the father God. Now, please make note of that. That actually, we were, we were, we referenced that because there's, there's a very important application to understanding Torah. That's why we reference that. However, to stay strictly on this particular point and to conclude this particular point, the point of why do we observe both a solar and a lunar, or a lunar, actually it would go from the lunar to solar, you understand? And then once one passes that rite of passage, the bar mitzvah, or the, for us we say the welde te'izaz, the welde son of, or child of, son of te'izaz, the commandment, or walete, um, daughter of te'izaz, a daughter of the commandment. Then we pass from the lunar solar now to the solar lunar. So the, the child begins off with that mother, the closeness to the mother in the natural birth first. In the natural birth, one is close to the mother. And then grows, we can say, to the father because the child is in the mother. The child is at their breastfed by the mother. So the child knows the mother, you understand, in, in the natural and in the God-given sense. It's the mother that becomes that first teacher, you understand, in the same way for us, the law is our mother, therefore the law spiritually becomes our teacher. And we cited Galatians chapter 3 verses 24 to 25 to show that this is not just an Old Testament Belukidan idea, but it is a, a New Testament idea. And that in order to understand it in the New Testament concept, we have to study the Old Testament. Thus, the words and the advice and teaching of His Majesty is that the Bible should not be cut into portions. In other words, separated and segregated, but we need to study one book along with other books in the Scripture. You understand? To get the full idea, to put it in its proper and in the accurate context. So that's what's key right there. Now, at the conclusion of this particular point right here, the, the loony solar. So we begin here. In fact, we can put up here one, two. You understand? One, two. And now when we go from the, the, the Old Testament to the New Testament, right, there is a rite of passage. Now, biblically speaking, this is what is known as being born again. Now, remember Galatians for a moment. Just think about what Galatians said. In fact, let's just go back to Galatians. This is what it means to rightly divide the word of truth. You understand? Study to show our self approve, rightly dividing the word of truth, rightly explaining um, the truth here with there to make a full picture, to answer a question or a particular um, um a particular interest or particular subject matter. Here it says, it says, um, but before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up to the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us, bring us to Christ, to bring us to Moshiach, to bring us to Moshiach, in other words, to the Messiah, to Christos, that we might be justified by faith. Now the rule of the Mitmanon's life is gracious, not legal. Now, does not mean that there's no law, but it's 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 the law of life in Christ and it's the graciousness of the law of life in Christ. 
controls for those who seek to make their wills obedient to good influences and to the best of their ability avoid evil and in order to follow this aim one must be guided as Nagus Nagest Nagus Nagest Tai Chin Abad Tai Chin Katamawi Hal Salasi has taught us one must be guided by the faith or the living faith or in the translation said religion but we don't have a word religion in Amharic we have living faith in Amharic and in the Ethiopic or the word Hymenot the word Hymenot so it says but after that faith that imnet that Hymenot has come we are no longer under a schoolmaster then it says that the justified mitmanan, in other words, the righteous, this is the road to his righteousness, not self-righteousness, but his righteousness, is a son in the family of Ha-Elohim, not a servant under the law. But in discipleship, we go through that servantship process, and it's important, it's, it's very important, but it says, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christos Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into the Moshiach, or into Christos, have put on Christos, have put on Christ. There is, now see, this is a process, a lot of people would jump to this as it's already a full it's a conclusion with them, but they have not gone. They have not submitted themselves to the process. You understand? They have not, not submitted themselves. So we have to understand that this is true, but there's a context where it says there's neither Jew um, nor Greek, because some of the Hebrews, the Black Hebrews, you understand, were under the Jewish authority. Some of them were under the Greek authorities, like much like today. You understand? Where some of us are more. Afrocentric, you understand, or are going to our black, identifiably, overtly black roots, while others are trying to go along with the status quo, you understand, are trying to, as we say, either they're trying to pass or trying to blend, assimilate. So, in this sense, what says neither Jew nor Greek is saying neither those of us in our natural or God given state, our Hebraic, Ethiopian, Hebrew state nor assimilated state, or today we would say whitewashed state. You understand? There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye all, for ye are all one in Christos Jesus. And if ye be the Moshiach, or Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs. That means we have an inheritance according to the promise according to the promise like we said this is this is the basis by and large for the the rite of passage known as the bar mitzvah for us as ethiopian hebrews and elect of astafari this is, we call it um the Walda to Izaz and the Waleta to Izaz, respectively, for the male and the female. And we say we'll touch on that a little bit more. But let's let's deal with the so, the loony solar and the solar lunar. So we begin off in discipleship. We begin off in discipleship following the loony solar Hebrew calendar. And as we grow, we grow to understand the fatherhood of God, therefore the solar lunar and this is where the Ethiopic Hebrew calendar that we have um, that we have mentioned and that we teach from, and that is the root becomes more a a a a active, um, a real and a present um, thing. The knowledge of it. This is what the Bible says that when when that faith has come, when we when we become grown up, become mature. You understand, in the word and what it's saying in its application. Now, the Old Testament predominantly is governed by the lunar. The New Testament by the solar. Proverbs 1 and 8, we touched on the law of the mother. And, that, and then we touched on Galatians 3, 24 and 25 to explicate a little bit more about this law and about the nanny or the pedagogue that, that helps us 
You understand? Um, but the law is of the mother. You understand? The instruction now is of the father. Christ, the Messiah, has come with the instruction of the Father. And if you look through the New Testament, you will see that the main idea that Christ did not come to enforce the old degenerate motherhood. Now, see, there's something that we need to understand because if we look at the Old Testament. It speaks about the Queen of Heaven. It speaks about uh, Ashtoreth. It speaks about, even in the New Testament, it speaks about Babylon. Babylon is that old degenerate mother or that false misinterpretation of the law. Now, the true mother now, when we go to Revelation chapter 12, 1, we're going to see the true mother symbolically as Israel, but in manifestation, in this dispensation, as holy Ethiopia. Ethiopia now, holy Ethiopia. And, and we have to understand the difference between Secular Ethiopia and Holy Ethiopia. Today, what we see by and large is secular Ethiopia. But the Holy Ethiopia, the spiritual community, is based on that Israelitish foundation or the Judeo, the Judeo Christian foundation. Now, when we get to Revelation chapter twelve, one here it speaks of the woman who's identified with being.